All right, we're back uh, with uh, the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and of course, to our first major conversation this morning on traffic management uh, in Lagos City. I'm glad to say our guest is already standing by uh, to do justice to this topic. The Lagos State Traffic Management Authority last month arrested 19 uh, vehicles, or should I say impounded 19 vehicles, for indiscriminate illegal parking of vehicles, uh, garages, and parks in the state. Uh, the arrest followed uh, continuous perennial traffic gridlock uh, experience around um, parts of the state. For instance, we have the Apombom uh, inwards and outwards, Lagos Island, for those who uh, may not know where that part of Lagos State is. Um, the general manager of uh, the agency, Boraji Oriagba, uh, said the ongoing total clampdown, as he put it, and backed upon by the authority to, was to generally ease uh, the traffic situation and traffic flow in Lagos State, ease traffic flow to motorists, particularly during what he called the ember months uh, across the state. This is uh, happens to be the... Um, the months of September, October, November, and December, we see maybe a little bit more activity, uh, you know, business activity and movement of people uh, around the country. Now, Oreba disclosed that a study had revealed that the perennial traffic gridlock experienced by motorists in Lagos State is caused by recalcitrant drivers uh, who do not want to comply with the state traffic laws and regulations. He also said the ongoing total enforcement is expected to cover major identified spots and is being coordinated by the core operation commands uh, from LASMA headquarters in Oshodi, uh, Lagos. However, this ongoing total enforcement isn't being received well by some residents who, uh, you know, of Nigeria's commercial nerve center who feel that traffic agency is doing too hard or going too hard on private vehicles uh, as compared to commercial transportation vehicles, uh, popularly known as downfall. Now we have joining us uh, to discuss this all-important issue of uh, traffic management in Nigeria's largest city, Nigeria's commercial nerve center, Lagos, um, Mr. Mondo Ubani, who is a legal practitioner of Ubani & Co. Mr. Ubani, good morning to you, and thank you very much uh, for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. Good morning. Um, uh, Last month has given us reasons why they're embarking on this to this total clamp down, like they call it, a total enforcement uh, uh, against motorists who park indiscriminately in in Lagos, different spots of Lagos. Um, what are your thoughts on on the work of last month in recent time and the resultant effect of traffic in Lagos? You're joining us from Lagos, so you know better than most people. Yeah, thank you uh, for having me once again. I want to say that I live in Lagos and uh, I experience uh, Lagos gridlock. Uh, anytime I'm going to court uh, in Lagos Island, I have to wake up by 4 a.m. and most leave my house uh, by 5.30 or 6 latest if I must be in court on, on, on time, that is 9, 9 a.m., which is the time the court sits in Lagos Island. If it's in Zikeja, ordinary that, I mean, I should leave my house by 8.30. If I don't leave by 7 a.m., uh, the likelihood of going to court very late is there. Lagos, uh, living in Lagos is very hellish, I must tell you this. Lagos is a beautiful place, but the only disadvantage of living in Lagos is the traffic situation. The traffic situation is very, very killing. People are dying gradually in Lagos. Street people who, who work in Lagos Island, it takes an average uh, three hours to get to work. It also takes an average of three hours to get back to your home for those who live in mainland. You know, and vice versa. It, it's a terrible situation. And uh, Almost every government has uh, f found it very difficult uh, to actually ease the gridlock in Lagos, except uh, Fashola's administration that tried to build. And then there was this intention on the part of uh, Ambode uh, to really phase out these commercial buses and, and bring in uh, government buses and private uh, uh, enterprise uh, to actually supplement in ensuring the free flow of traffic in Lagos. We are back to square one in terms of gridlock. It's very clean. It's very clean for those 
who go to work every day. You have to wake up so early. You have, you have to be on time in your office. And so anything that the government is doing in order to ease uh, traffic uh, congestion in Lagos is clearly welcome. Uh, the last mile have to be up and doing. They need to wake up very early in order to ensure that the people who drive on the road do not maintain poor driving practices. You know, a lot of these bus drivers and some of even private owners find it very easy to commit crime by going going through the process of one way or parking illegally or you know all manner of things. Even for what, what I see on the road at times, you know, somebody will just come and park his motor in such a manner that he knows that there is no, you know, thoroughfare, you know, and he is blocking the road. You see the kind of impunity and kind of carelessness on the part of uh, Lagos uh, drivers, not unnecessarily the, the 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 commercial bus drivers. I'm talking about even private owners. They they will just park anyhow and block the road, and then they go, you know, and start doing their business, you know, not caring that people. Uh, have been have been have been inconvenienced, you know. So whatever that can be done within the parameters of the law, parameters of the law, we may also discuss this of abuses because anyone who is in uniform in this country tend to be very you know uh, abuse the law and all that. We take we talk about it, but I'm saying that last man has to actually you know get up and and then be alert and then up the game in order to ease uh, traffic on the you know issue situation in Lagos. It's becoming so unbearable for those who, who live in Lagos, you know, uh, spend average three hours to get to work, average three hours to back, get back to work, I mean, from work, it's, it's terrible. It's a terrible situation. All right, let's talk about, you know, uh, like you have mentioned, free flow of traffic, and you have you have mentioned that it would be important to face out, you know, uh, private enterprise and have government-owned buses move around. But really, is that the problem? Because if you look at the road network, especially for those who are on the island, the road network is nothing to write home about. It's a one way in and one way out. Everybody's going through the same road to come in and come out. It's not applicable to you know those who are on the main line. And so is, is this really the solution, facing out private enterprise or the road network? No, I, I agree that in addition, it's not one, it's not one, one solution in, in, in a in really, you know, face it. I mean, trying to congest the road in Lagos, you don't probably uh, take only one uh, particular solution, uh, which is the issue of removing this uh, uh, and all these, uh, uh, is it, is, are there yellow buses and all that out the road? Uh, creating road network creating the road network and diversification of transport system like railway, you know, uh, those who go through uh, uh, sea and all that, will really help to decongest Lagos. I, I understand that Lagos is trying to do Fort Mainland Bridge. Now, that has been in the pipeline. And it's obvious that this present government of four-year tenure of uh, Sangolu may not probably consider, maybe he is waiting for his second tenure, to, to continue that particular bid process because Fort Mainland Bridge uh, will really do a lot in, term, in terms of the congestion. Then the railway system, I don't know, I also understand that that one has, has nearly gotten to an advanced stage and very soon it's going to be uh, operational. We need to have a rail, a rail working system in Lagos also in order to help in the congestion. If you rely only on, 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 on motor and on, on cars, uh, plying, plying the road, you know, as the only means of transportation in Lagos, then you have not planned well uh, for so a, a place called Center of Excellence, you know. It has to be a mixture of all all, uh, all transport system, you know, that can ease uh, tri congestion. So I agree with you that phasing out the yellow buses and all that may not be the only solution. You have to take multi-dimensional measures, which include other means of transportation, creating uh, other mean more no, red no, uh, road network, which is not you know presently on, uh, except you know there is no major no major you know uh, uh, road uh, creation that I'm saying, you like the Fort uh, Mainland Bridge I'm talking about. You know when Ambode was here, remember what he did in uh, Oshodi? Remember what he did in uh, he, he, he Bega Ojodu Bega? Remember what he did in Agege? These are the kind of, you know, uh, you know, uh, and then airport, airport international road. 
is is things like that that can begin to really ease trans uh, uh, transportation system in Lagos. But if you don't have such major major uh, plan of creation of more additional road and road network, then we, we, we will remain where we are and all that. So I agree with you that uh, creation of more road, road network. All right. Uh, 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 Mr. Bane, are you there and can you hear us? I seem to have a freeze on the network. Um, but important points uh, he's raised about, uh, you know, react in response to Messi's question about looking at other means of transportation in legal state. Mr. Bane, can you hear me? Okay, I don't know what happened. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, but, but interesting points you've raised. Um, looking at the, the, the reason given by the um, uh, the general manager of the Lagos State Traffic Management Agency, LASMA, or authority, LASMA, um, he's saying that they conducted a study which revealed that the perennial traffic gridlock experienced by motorists uh, was caused by recourse and drivers. they coming down hard on illegal or indiscriminate, what they say, um, illegal parking of vehicles indiscriminate illegal parking of vehicles. Now, we look at the major spots we have gridlock in Lagos State. As a road user in Lagos State, you described the situation as hellish, and you said we are back to square one as far as traffic management is concerned. So we're talking about pre-Fashola um, um, days. Um, who was governor before Fashola? Mercy. Uh, yeah, I can't remember yeah, all okay. of that. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. Um, yes, Tinubu. Thanks for the reminder, Mr. Obani. So, um, do you agree that it's about, it's majorly about um, indiscriminate or illegal parking? That's why we have the, the traffic gridlock in, in, in spots in Lagos State. So, most, uh, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, Lagosians are very indisciplined, you know, when it comes to driving on the road. Uh, I discover most times you uh, you encounter very terrible gridlock, very terrible gridlock. Sometimes hours uh, you will be on the steering, and then when you now get to the place uh, that probably started the gridlock, in order to know the major reason why that gridlock, you will not see anything. Obviously, somebody has shown some level of indiscipline by either parking in order to carry a passenger. And before you know it, the traffic build up. As, and so he, 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 he is right only in one aspect in saying that indiscipline, uh, you know, drive, you know, drivers, you know, people who are not disciplined, drivers on the road contribute, but not the only reason. It's not the only reason. Yes, very rough drivers cause gridlock. Most times you get to the bus stop, it is that they have parked in order to pick passengers, you know, indiscriminately. And in the process, you know, there will be a traffic buildup. And so it is one of the reasons, not the only reason. Mm. You know, I, I am saying it here with every sense of responsibility that it is part of the reason. People are so indisciplined on the road. People park wrongly. People drive wrong way. People are so impatient. Any small green, any small hold up. Before you know it, people start taking the road and blocking even oncoming vehicles and all that. So that can constitute nuisance. And for hours, you guys can be there. You know, you have that for several times. You know, yes, people are clearly, clearly, very, very careless and indisciplined on the road. But that is not only the reason. So taking care of making sure that people are punished or discipline or plenaries for parking wrongly and all that is part of the solution, but not the only solution. I've mentioned issue of road network. I'm also I've mentioned I've also mentioned issue of diversification of the transport system. You can't rely on road transportation only in order to actually ease in the 21st century. And you call Lagos State a center of excellence. No, you can't you can't go, go to London and see how a city that is old functions. You cannot bother buying any vehicle or using any vehicle in London City. I mean, anywhere you want to go, they, all the transport system are working, the railway, the, you know, all of them, the you know, road, even the sea. You know, so why can't we, you know, with all the kind of resources we have and all the kind of money that Lagos they have, you, you, you spend four or five hours, you know, your life is being shot in every day. You know, anyone that comes to Lagos, you know, and probably go to Abuja and you see the difference. You know, who like to live in Lagos? Some of us, if not for the business we do here in Lagos, would have relocated. You go to some other places outside Lagos, you see life, you see serenity, you see, you see, you see, you know, your life, you know, you come back refreshed. But here, here is hellish. 
You come back, your life is being shot in every day. You have high blood pressure. People are collapsing and dying as a result of spending hours on traffic. You know, it can be very frustrating. Any serious government should be able to tackle this issue Money. of transport, the no issue of uh, management of the, of the road, you know, in Lagos. It should pay adequate attention, make every arrangement. Because it is clearly a failure of governance. You know, if you go and spend three or four hours on the, on the road going to work, it can be killing. Well, it means that there is no governance, you know, and all that. So I am very happy that they have now woken up in order to ensure that the road is free and discipline those that actually block roads, you know, illegally and do the wrong thing. But in doing it again, as I said earlier, we must also ensure that there is no abuse. People should also monitor them. Because anyone in uniform can, they can have Nigeria abuse, abuse their power. You must make sure that they do it within the ambit of the law, that they not abuse their powers. But I like the fact that you have mentioned, you know, the issues as it is, uh, protection of lives and properties as your objective right there for LASMA and also ensuring that there's free flow of traffic. But another issue, which is not only, I mean, I don't know, but driving through the roads of Abuja seem to be very seamless. And that's why one would say that the president might not understand that people are going through a lot because the roads in Abuja are really different from other parts. I mean, if you're driving through, the roads are seamless. I don't know if I've ever experienced a pothole right there in the FCT. But you see, there are several potholes. That's another issue. What exactly? Because this also constitutes to the traffic situation. Like you would say, if you drive through your passenger or motorist, at some point you encounter, you know, the gridlock, and then you will find out that nothing is really in front of you. It probably might just be a pothole that a vehicle is trying to maneuver. These are the issues. So, um, why has this been, you know, on f on the front burner? Now, just recently, we also have reports of, you know, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. It's a lot. Tipas are just moving back and forth and, you know, crashing over trailers and what have you because the roads are not motorable. Why haven't we been great? If Lagos is really, you know, the, uh, the hub of Africa's business and what have you, largest um, African business uh, center, the accolades will go on and what. But why haven't we been able to, you know, fix the roads? The roads are not motorable. That's also a major concern. I like that you share your thoughts on this one. And this is not just limited to Lagos State. It cuts across board. It is clearly, clearly absence of governance. And then I don't know whether to say lack of seriousness on the part of any government to neglect maintenance of the road. Now, I live in Magodo. I live in Magodo in Sherry. And, I, I, I'm, and, and God knows what I'm, I'm trying to say now. I will not want to run any government down for the sake of doing that. That would be clearly responsible on my part. I'm a citizen of this country, and I should be responsible enough to speak the truth, uh, also to power, and tell them the right thing to be done, you know, not being afraid. I am not too happy with the maintenance of the road under this administration. I live in Magodo, as I said earlier. The road to my estate, Magodo Isheri. Magodo Isheri, the moment you are coming from uh, Omole Phase 2 and you want to enter into Magodo, Magodo, the road is so, I mean, there is one particular spot now that you can spend almost 20 minutes before you. And this is a, a road within five minutes from uh, Isheri, you are, in, you are in Magodo Estate. Well, because that place has been there for almost two or three months now, and then every day the road is getting worse and worse without any intervention of government. I know, and I'm saying it here, not probably to praise any person or to run down any government. When Fashola was in power, that road almost every three, three weeks, or, you know, even though I also we condemn that attitude of not doing it well, but they make sure that they come there regularly to patch that road and make it very motorable. The same thing with when Ambode was there. But I'm surprised for over six months now, nothing has been done on the road leading to Sherry Magodo. And so also all other roads in Lagos. So all other roads in Lagos. And so the moment you don't maintain roads, it will lead to uh, congestion of the road. Because trying to avoid bad spots will lower your movement. The moment transport, I mean, your movement is lowered, other vehicles will also lower their distance. Before you know it, traffic started to build up. 
if you know about driving, you know about velocity, you know about slowing down, and there are so many vehicles in Lagos. The moment one second is wasted, you know, in trying to avoid bad spot. Before you know it, vehicles now will be avoid, you know, be trying to and then build up, build up. Before you know it, it takes three hours for you to get to your destination. So bad road, as rightly mentioned, is part of it. And I think that I'm calling on the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Sanwolu, to really wake up and really ask those people in the Ministry of Work what they are doing. All the roads are not being maintained. All the roads. And under this rainy season, I tell you this, uh, a lot of the roads are bad. So unleashing uh, last mile is good on the road. We must also take all that, you know, uh, actions, action that can actually ease transport, one of which is maintenance of the road. The second one is issue of creation of more uh, road network. There are places that are terrible gridlock. What we bring you engineers, and I tell you, Nigerian engineers are so good. When I saw what Lagos they did in Ojodu Bega, what Ojodu Bega have lived in Magodo, in the sherry for many years. But when one day I just saw what happened in Ojodu Bega, and I said, which engineers? And I said, Nigerian engineers. They just came and they put on their thinking cap and said, what do we do to ensure we ease this great law that happens in Ojodu Bega? And look at, if you pass through Ojodu Bega, you know, you can attest to what I did. And I know that it's our engineer. So Lagos State has engineers that can come in and then say, what do we do? They can, you know, fly over, whatever. Before you know it, area that has that have become perennial in terms of green law, you can come and before you know it, you begin to ease transport, I mean, transport system there. So I think that the Lagos State under Shawol, we need to really put on thinking that there are a lot of issues, you know, bordering on issue of uh, transportation issue in Lagos, like can handle. There are areas we know that are perennial green law. You can bring in engineers in from Lagos, and I tell you, before you know it, they can be able to solve the problem. You know what happened in Oshodi? You know what happened in Agege? It's Nigerian engineers that did all this. So all it can right. be done. All so right. let him also ensure that this thing is done. Right. For now, the roads are not being maintained in Lagos, and that is contributing Th to the traffic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mando Bani. And uh, it's interesting the points you've raised. Um, we only hope that uh, that hellish state of uh, traffic situation in Lagos will become a bit more heavenly in the coming uh, coming <laughs> months. Thank you so much for Tamadi Obani, legal practitioner, and of course joining us from Obani and Co. Uh, legal Chambers right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. When we thank return you. from our break, thank we, you very much for me. Yes, we have a conversation on the electricity situation and workers from the sector are planning to embark on another strike, which we will discuss.